Good morning, I'm Dennis Dota. The Iowa State University community and fans are in shock this morning. Two Cyclone athletes have been arrested. There was an armed robbery and a shootout. Sports Director Mark Matthew will join us in a moment with the university reaction. But first, we want to tell you what we know about all this. Sometime after 10.30 last night, two armed men walked into this Burger King on Lincoln Way in Ames. They ordered two employees and two customers into the freezer and locked them up. Police say the robbers fired one shot, but they hurt no one. Somehow a young woman escaped. She alerted police. When they came, there was a shootout. And Iowa State basketball star Sam Mack was hit twice by bullets. Football player Levin White was shot once. Both young men are listed in satisfactory condition under guard at Mary Greeley Hospital in Ames. Ames Police Chief Dennis Ballantyne tells us how this all went down. At about 10.45 last night, one of the employees of her been shot. I just can't believe it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything else about it. Just what they told me this morning. They called me Dave Cox at 5 o'clock. You know uh, but as soon as I'm able to get on the plane and everything, I'll be in back. But he's been there two years. Never done anything wrong. No, I've been coaching 37 years. And never had anything like this. A nice personality. Great family support. As you heard Coach Orr said, he plans on returning to Ames immediately to be of any possible assistance in this matter. Meanwhile, ISU President Gordon Eaton is also out of town, but David Lent, ISU's Director of Information, and Max Urich, ISU's Athletic Director, both gave us their reaction this morning. Ending a legal resolution of this case, their team memberships and athletic department privileges have been suspended. Roll it up, Proctor. Roll it up. I, I don't understand it. Um, I'm very disappointed. I feel badly for the people of Virginia. Back out too. Very badly for uh, the family. I feel very badly for the university. Uh, it's been which camera? Uh, in the world, it's like this, this would happen. The unpredictable ones of what we were going to do just dumbfounded, especially in light of just two team meetings just last week with the football squad by Jim Wald and the basketball of Johnny Orr. The emphasis of, of the accountability of their actions, the emphasis of uh, fulfilling their academic requirements in the classroom, uh, their personal responsibility to save them. So Dennis, the incident certainly has shocked the campus community this morning, and especially Cyclone fans. Sam Mack was to be a speaker tonight at a Cyclone Mason City fundraising event. Now, it's kind of ironic. You've been in that Burger King and all around the walls. It's obviously a big booster. There are photos of the teams, and right by the door that leads to the kitchen and the freezer, is a photograph of the basketball team. A little bit of irony, Sam Mack was very close to me because he went to a high school where my best friend now teaches. And yesterday, I sat down to write him a letter to tell him how well Sam Mack was doing. I hadn't mailed the letter yet. We need to wait for the rest of the details to unfold here. Mark, thank you very much. We will have more on this story, of course, for you this afternoon on Iowa News Today at 5 o'clock. With Mark Matthew, I'm Dennis Dota, 5 TV News. This is a 5 TV News special report. Good morning, I'm Dennis Dota. The Iowa State University community and fans are in shock this morning. Two Cyclone athletes have been arrested. There was an armed robbery and a shootout. Sports Director Mark Matthew will join us in a moment with university reaction. But first, we want to tell you what we know about all this. Sometime after 10.30 last night, two armed men walked into this Burger King on Lincoln Way in Ames. They ordered two employees and two customers into the freezer and locked them up. Police say the robbers fired one shot, but they hurt no one. Somehow a young woman escaped. She alerted police. When they came, there was a shootout. And Iowa State basketball star Sam Mack was hit twice by bullets. Football player Levin White was shot once. Both young men are listed in satisfactory condition under guard at Mary Greeley Hospital in Ames. Ames Police Chief Dennis Ballantyne tells us how this all went down. Well, about 10.45 last night, one of the employees of Burger King uh, realized they were being robbed, armed robbery, and she jumped out of the drive-up window, 
ran down the police station. Uh, three officers responded. When they arrived, the two suspects came out the door. Uh, the one suspect, White, had a rifle. When the officers told him to halt, uh, he raised the rifle toward them. And uh, the other suspect, Mac, at that time ducked down and acted like he was going to try to go back inside. And the officers opened fire, uh, hitting Mac twice and, and uh, White once. Sports Director Mark Matthew has been on this story since early this morning, gathering reaction from athletic officials at Iowa State University. And I think shock is the only word that can sum this up. The uh, entire university seems to have been shocked by this. Especially for Coach Johnny Orr, Dennis, because both he and Coach Walden are attending a coach's meeting in Seattle. But we spoke with Coach Orr by phone earlier this morning. He had this reaction. In shock about it. I, I just can't believe it. And... Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything else about it. Just what they told me to, this morning. They called me Dave Cox at five o'clock, and uh, but as soon as I'm able to get on a plane and everything, I'll be heading back. Uh, he's been there two years. Never done anything wrong. No, I've been coaching 37 years. I've never had anything like this. Nice personality. Great family support. You know. As you heard, Coach Orr said he plans on returning to Ames immediately to be of any possible assistance in this matter. Meanwhile, ISU President Gordon Eaton is also out of town, but David Lent, ISU's Director of Information, and Max Urich, ISU's Athletic Director, both gave us their reaction this morning. Pending a legal resolution of this case, their team memberships and athletic department privileges have been suspended by the Department of Athletics. Well, I'm just dumbfounded, Mark. I, I don't understand it. Um, I'm very disappointed. I feel badly for the people at Burger King. I feel bad, badly for uh, the families, and I feel very badly for the university. Uh, I don't know how in the world something like this, this would happen. The unpredictableness of, of what people are going to do just dumbfounds me, especially in light of just two team meetings just last week with the football squad by Jim Walden and the basketball with Johnny Orr, of the emphasis of, of the accountability of their actions, the emphasis of uh, fulfilling their academic requirements in the classroom, of their personal responsibility as citizens. So Dennis, the incident certainly has shocked the campus community this morning, and especially Cyclone fans. Sam Mack was to be a speaker tonight at a Cyclone Mason City fundraising event. Now it's kind of ironic, you've been in that Burger King and all around the walls, it's obvious they're a big booster. There are photos of the teams, and right by the door that leads to the kitchen and the freezer, is a photograph of the basketball team. A little bit of irony, Sam Mack was very close to me because he went to a high school where my best friend now teaches. And yesterday I sat down to write him a letter to tell him how well Sam Mack was doing. I haven't mailed the letter yet. We need to wait for the rest of the details to unfold yeah. here. Mark, thank you very much. We will have more on this story, of course, for you this afternoon on Iowa News Today at 5 o'clock. With Mark Matthew, I'm Dennis Stoda, 5 TV News.
Basically, only if it involves something that you knew at the time or that you saw last yeah, night, you know. So, uh, Kevin, what did you see last night? Well, what I saw was uh, I had, was talking to the owner of a business next door, and I had heard a, uh, a loud bang. We had heard a loud bang, and we had gone over to the glass to see what was going on, to see outside. And I had seen a cop running with a shotgun over to Burger King next door, and there were a couple cop cars over there already. And uh, next thing you know, there's about five more cop cars, cop cars surrounding the place. And um, well, I couldn't really tell what was going on inside, but you know. And next thing I knew, an ambulance came by. A couple more shots were fired, and uh, they were bringing a gentleman out. There was a long period of waiting, and they were bringing a, ge a gentleman, lady. I didn't know what at the time it was, who who was in the on the roller that they brought out, and they had put someone in the ambulance. And um, the other guy they had captured and handcuffed, and it was a black gentleman in a red sweatshirt. And they had put him in the cop car, and that was basically the whole scene. It all went so fast that right. you couldn't really tell. You had no idea necessarily who these people were at the time? Not at the time, no. I do now, but not at the time. Were you scared? Did you have to wonder what was coming apart here? Uh, well, not really. The owner of the business next door locked the doors and said, I locked the doors, and so we're in here for a while because we don't know whether they've, we, they've captured you know, the eventual burglars or not. And uh, that was basically... It, I wasn't really that scared because I knew we were pretty much all safe and there was cops surrounding the area, but I was yet cautious. So. Very good. That's all I need from you. Okay. Just that eyewitness account. All right. I appreciate you. Okay. Time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. First of all, tell me, what was your relationship with Levin White? Oh, we were best friends up here at Iowa State, and we were best friends back home. We, we played football together at San Bernardino Valley College in California. And I transferred out here about one year ago, and he transferred out here about a semester ago. Yeah, uh, was it? Did you talk him into moving out here? Well, I got a scholarship out of the junior college to here, and he got a scholarship to USC, and we kind of wanted to play on the same team in Division One football, so we talked to each other a lot over the phone, and he decided to transfer out here with me. Uh, did he like it here at Iowa State? Yeah, he liked it. What I know of, he, he really liked it up here. We had plans for the future, and that's going to hurt, you know. <laughs> we had goals for both of us. That's going to be pretty tough to take. So I, I figure he liked it. Uh, you say you talked to him last Thursday. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what you talked about, or did he did he seem let on it, uh, what might happen later on that night? Uh, I have no idea of anything like that. We've talked. We talked just like any other day, just on a friendly, you know, basis. But uh, I talked to him after dinner. I'm not sure about what time it was. Probably in the evening, sometime. And we were sitting there talking in his room, and I got a phone call from Sam Mack. I, I just picked up his phone. We don't. We just pick each other's phone up all the time. But I picked his phone up, and I, I just said hello. And, Says Levan, I go, yeah, hold on a sec. He, I, I said, who's calling? He said, Sam, and that's the last I heard. And then Levan said, Sam's come over right now. I said, all right. And I just came over in my room then. So. Did he seem uh, agitated or? No, he off? seemed just like he did every other day. You know, just I had no idea anything like that was going to take place. I was I was real surprised about it. Um, this might be a little personal, but did he use drugs or at all? No. If he did, I was unaware of it, and we're best friends, so that'd be hard to say. Uh, what about drinking? Social drinker? Yeah, he was a social drinker, you know, occasional drinks, pretty much like the average college student, probably even less than that. Now, uh, there was there was a uh, lady at the place, I believe, I'm looking at, 
that uh, he uh, took a drug test on Monday, thought for some reason he might fail that test. Do you know anything about that at all? Did he mention anything about I'd, taking the test at all? No, if he did, I'm sure he was just taken. I don't think he had any problems with that. Not that I would be aware of, you know. Did he have a girlfriend? Yeah, he has a real close girlfriend back home. Uh, uh, as far as his background stuff, you went to the same uh, as a junior, junior college, college yeah. stuff. Uh, has has he had any problems in the past? Is this totally blowing you away? Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, He's a very poised person, you know. I've never seen someone so much poise in my life and actual uh, emotional control or anything. I've learned a lot from myself, and that really blows me away for something like that. Uh, on a friend basis, how do you feel? Is this totally devastating to you? You said you have plans and stuff for the future and stuff. Yeah, but well, we'll st I'm still always be his best friend, you know. You have to just keep on going just something like that happens won't break it off and I'm gonna have to just keep on going with my life and football which is my goals and the reason I'm here so hopefully he'll get out and do all right that's what I'm hoping has the team met at all as far as to uh, discuss you know as far as uh, trying to you know be aware of the media and uh, <clears throat> for you know a lot of things have happened recently with La Festa Rose and now this and some other incidences in the past. Uh, has the team met at all and, you know, kind of a morale boost, you know, don't let this get you down at all? Well, we've met with the athletic director. We haven't met with uh, Coach Walden yet, and we haven't met just as a team, you know, away from the coaches yet, but I'm sure we will. Uh, what did uh, the athletic director tell you then? He was just telling us to keep on going on. That was one fallback, and we can't look back to that now we just have to look onto the next steps and pull together and and take it through is there anything else that you might be able to tell us about sam mac that let people know that uh maybe you know this was a totally irrational act and you know he was a g great guy i i i knew i i didn't know sam mac at all and i think what i know levan and him had just became friends since we came back from a spring break here so I don't I don't think they they really knew each other too well either I don't think they were very close but like I said they just became friends alrighty that I know of well, uh, is any other, what's that? Just, just darn, uh, somebody knocked down the uh, um, macro lens I just noticed so, so, it, so it's gonna might about uh, that Thursday when you he got the call and stuff from uh, Sam. You were in his room. Well, after dinner, I went I went over to Levan's room and we were just talking, talking on like a friendly basis, like I said, like we normally do. And we were over there sitting in his room and his phone rang and I picked it up. And they just asked for Levan. I said, and I asked who is it, and he said Sam. And I just figured it was Sam Mack. And I just said, hold on a sec, gave it to Levan. And Levan talked to him for a little bit and he got off the phone. I just figured he was coming over. Levan told me, you know, Sam's coming over, so I just came back to my room, take a shower and stuff like that. And and I guess they went out for the night. I didn't ask where they were going or anything like that. Yeah. That was earlier in the evening, you know, so. Uh, you said that they've just become friends uh, as far as you knew around spring break. Uh, yeah. Do you, uh, do you know anything about the relationship at all other than the, that? I don't think the relationship could have been too tight like I said I think they just became friends when we got back from spring break from what I'm aware of and what Levan's told me so I don't think they're too tight but like I said I think they're just becoming friends. Do you know anything about uh, Levan's uh, family life at all? Yeah. Uh, does it seem pretty pretty close-knit family and? Yeah he has a he has a real good mom very good and supportive mom and has a little brother, a sister, a girlfriend back home. And uh, there was another rumor. Uh, there's a lot of rumors. And some of it are place leads, and, other, and everything's being looked into as far as uh, we're being told by the police that uh, LeVan forced Sam Mack. There's, to go there's with no him. way. There's no way that would have happened. I, there's, 
I could, I, I couldn't even imagine that. Like I said, they just become friends, so that's, I think that's kind of par for the course for someone to say that to get themselves out of jail, maybe. Or that, that, there's no way LeVan would force something like that on happening. Was he hurt money-wise at all, as far as you knew? I don't think any more than any other college student. You know, all of us are hurting. I think he's pretty much in the same boat as everyone else. Now, he had a full ride scholarship, is that correct? Yeah. So pretty much uh, besides that, he just had to take care, uh, care of basic needs. Is that what it means to have a full ride? Yeah. Just, you know, the regular money wash and stuff like that and grocery shopping. So it's not like he was, you know, he was having... No, he didn't have to owe anybody any money or he didn't... He wasn't in depth or anything like that. Nothing. So, as far as you can tell, there's there's really no reason why he should have been at the Burger King that night. Then. No. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Right. So, Miss Richard, what can you tell me about today or anything that went to the court records today? There were two additional counts filed in the cases against Mr. Mack and Mr. White. Count two is kidnapping in the second degree. It's a class B felony. Carries a possibility, well, if upon conviction it carries a mandatory up to 25 year sentence. And also count three, which is terrorism, a class D felony, which carries the possibility of up to five years imprisonment and up to $7,500 fine. So three charges against each of them? Three counts against each of them. Okay, and uh, they still would have bond set at I think that bond on these two offenses was set at $100,000, as I recall. Okay, do you, probably not something you can count, uh, comment on, do you know if they have any priors, any arrests, or any convictions, any stories? You're right, that's something that I could not co comment on, even if I knew about it, because it would be part of the, uh, of the uh, investigation. Um, and I guess I'd, I'd just like to tell you this, as I told the rest of the people who are interviewing me, that the prosecutor is ethically bound not to comment on an investigation and so I just can't answer any questions like that. So that's it, just the additional two charges? Right. Okay, and uh, Mac will be here, what, pending his release from the hospital? Or? Well, yes, when he is released from the hospital, he's already under the custody, in the custody of the sheriff. And when he is released from the hospital, he will make his initial appearance before a judge. The law says they must appear within a reasonable amount of time. So as soon as he's released, I would imagine. So again, the charges are against both of them? Well, counts. they are now each charged with first degree robbery, second degree kidnapping, and terrorism. And all three combined would carry a maximum sentence? If you added them all together, and they were, if they were convicted of each of the three counts and were sentenced consecutively, there is a potential of up to 55 years. Thank you. Mr. White, why don't you step right up here in front of that small table? Mr. White, you are appearing here today on three separate criminal offenses. You are appearing here today on one charge of robbery in the first degree, one charge of kidnapping in the second degree, and one count of terrorism. Robbery in the first degree is a Class B felony. That means it carries a maximum penalty of up to 25 years in custody. It carries a minimum sentence of five years in custody. 
Kidnapping in the second degree is a class B felony also, so it carries a maximum penalty of up to 25 years in custody. Terrorism is a class D felony. It carries a maximum penalty of up to five years in custody and in addition, a maximum fine of $7,500. Uh, Mr. White, you have a right to remain silent here today about the facts of these charges. Anything you say about the facts can and will be used against you at a later date. You also have a right to be right represented by an attorney throughout these proceedings, and if you cannot afford an attorney, I will appoint one to represent you at public expense if you qualify. Uh, Mr. White, did you want to apply for a court-appointed attorney? Mr. White, what is your age? 21. Uh, your marital status? <clears throat> and do you have any dependents? Mm, yes, one. Uh, do you provide any support for that dependent? I don't. Are you currently employed? You've been an Iowa State student, is that right? Yes. And were you provided any financial support at Iowa State? Uh, scholarship. Other than your scholarship, uh, have you been provided any support? Do your parents support you, provide you any financial assistance? Yes, my father is sending money. Do you know if you're still claimed as dependent on your father's income tax returns? Yes. Is it? Other than your uh, support from your parents and the scholarship, do you have any other sources of income? Not at all. Do you own any assets? Uh, Mr. White, I will appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you in this matter. Uh, that could be subject to your possibly having to repay attorney's fees when these charges are resolved. That will depend on the outcome of the cases and also on your financial situation at the time. Mr. White, on the robbery charge, the allegation is that on March 30, 1989, at 11 o'clock p.m., at the Burger King restaurant at 209 Lincoln Way in Ames, Story County, Iowa, uh, you participated in a uh, robbery, and that that robbery was done with a dangerous weapon. Uh, the allegation on the charge of kidnapping is that on that same date and location, uh, you can find three persons without uh, their consent with the intent that such confinement be secret. On the charge of terrorism, the allegation is that at the same time and location, uh, you shot a dangerous rep weapon in a building, placing people there under apprehension of serious injury. Uh, Mr. White, I have set your preliminary hearing for these three matters for April 13th at 1.30 p.m. That will be in the district associate courtroom, which is in the basement of the courthouse here in Nevada. A preliminary hearing is not your trial. It's a determination as to whether or not there are sufficient facts to warrant prosecution on these three matters. Now, the uh, Public Defender's Office will explain to you in more detail 
exactly what will happen at the preliminary hearing. Mr. White, I have set your bond in these matters at $128,750 cash assured. Uh, so that means that you will have to post that bond if you want to be released pending the resolution of these charges. You have a right to have a bond review hearing within the next 24 hours. At that bond review hearing, you can ask that the bond be lowered or that you be placed on pretrial supervision. If you want to have a bond review hearing, tell that to your attorney at the Public Defender's Office. They can contact me and we'll have a hearing sometime tomorrow. Now I will call the Public Defender's Office as soon as I'm able to today or first thing in the morning and tell them that I have appointed them to represent you. Uh, but you should also use the telephone as soon as you can to make contact with the Public Defender's Office. Mr. White, here are copies of the complaints uh, with the three charges. And here's a copy of this order uh, telling you what the conditions of your release are, appointing the Public Defender's Office to represent you, uh, and setting your preliminary hearing. Mr. White, I'll just give these to the deputy, then he'll give you uh, those back in the jail. Uh, Mr. White, that's all I had for you here today, and uh, you're free to go back with the deputy. We're going to have to move here.
get a, going for a closer shot of the scale. So if okay. I move in closer while Just one going, second. Just one second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm, yeah, I've got mine set. Thanks, Steve. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about what happened last night? Okay, it was about 10 minutes to 11, and this young black guy approached the counter with a small rifle. We, at first, I thought it was a toy gun, but jumped up on the counter and demanded that I get back into the kitchen. And so I did what he said, and he seen me and another employee told us both to get down on the ground, and we did that. And then he told the employee to get up and get in the freezer. He told me to open the safe. And I guess we weren't moving fast enough, and he shot the rifle. He didn't aim it at either one of us. He just shot it at the, it went into the walk-in wall. Uh, employee got into the walk-in, and I opened the office door. And he proceeded to t grab all the cash out of the drawers that were in there. At that time, a second taller, and I guess that would have been Mac, I found out later, I didn't recognize him at the time, came back and he was carrying a knife and demanded that I go up front and get the drawers. He followed me up front and I opened the drive through drawer and he grabbed a burger sack out of the, from underneath the counter and proceeded to put the cash in it and asked for another drawer and I went and gave him the one from the counter that time the first guy came back and joined us and asked that I open the safe. Uh, there's a small floor safe up front. I opened it up. It's empty during the day. I told them it's empty. They got all the cash and they started to leave. And at that time they noticed a police car in the parking lot and said the police are here. And they got way down low on the floor and sort of duck walked to the back part of the restaurant. And I ran out the front of the door and told the cops that the, there was two suspects and that I had some employees that were still in the kitchen. And about that time, they had them trapped at the back entryway and were ordering them to stop and to freeze and drop their weapons. And I couldn't see what was going on, but uh, one police officer shot the, his rifle at him, and well, I guess he wounded both guys. Was there more than one shot, i.e. Did, did one of the suspects shoot first and then I, in retaliation? I really didn't see what happened out there. They shot once while they were in the store and as far as I remember the police officer only shot once after he, you know, he told them to drop their weapons and they refused. So I, don't, I, I didn't see what happened back there. I was blocked out. Um, how did the police know to arrive at the scene? I guess one of our employees that was in the store at the time and she was behind the drink station and they didn't see her. She dove out the drive through window and ran the four or five blocks to the police station and contacted them there. And by the time they were done grabbing all the cash, the police were already on the scene. So. Was there more than one police unit that arrived? Or? At first there was only the one car I noticed, but before they arrested him. There was a dozen cars there, I would guess. And at what time, how long of a time frame are you talking about here? The whole thing, I think, took look, t 10 minutes at the tops. It was over very quickly. And and were both of the suspects injured then? I, as far as you could as tell? I couldn't really tell, but from what I was told, one of them was hit in the foot and the other was in the thigh. But I didn't see any of that. They kept us away from them. But Were there any customers in the store at this time? I found out later that there were still two customers in the store and that, again, it would have been Mac had forced them into one of the freezers in the kitchen as well. And they were all in the kitchen when I came in. And I was short an employee, and I didn't know that she had left to contact the police and found her after the incident was over. Wow, this must have been a scary experience. 
It really didn't hit while they were in there. We just did what they said, and it wasn't until after I ran out of the store and told the police what was going on that the heart started beating real fast, and it, what really happened caught up to me. Did they say anything to you as to why they were doing this? Any indication as to their, they, their purpose? The, only, the first suspect always just kept yelling, open the safe, open the safe, and so just seemed like they were all after the money was all. And you didn't realize who they were at all? I them. didn't recognize either one of them. And I was told afterwards that they had found the ID identifying both of them. And I was surprised that it was him. I didn't mm -hmm. recognize. It was a tall fellow, but I didn't recognize that it was one of the basketball players. Well, how do you think this reflects upon the Iowa State athletic? I. I don't know. I mean, it's an isolated incident. I don't know if, you know, see a lot of basketball players in the store eating all the time, and they don't cause any problems. So, I mean, it's the first time I'd seen anything like this in AIM, so yeah. it's, it was bizarre. Did you ever think you'd have a chance to make a break for it last night? Did you think about um, that? One time, the guy that had the rifle dropped his clip of bullets and me and the one employee that he was holding at gunpoint at that time for a brief second thought about something but we just we're taught to do as they say and that's the best policy to assure that you'll get out of it safe like I said after the police were there and they were heading to the back part of the restaurant I got out of the store and tried to tell them that there was just the two suspects Anything else that maybe you want to tell us that maybe we didn't think to ask you? Uh, I really don't. Still kind of shaking up a little bit? Yeah, okay. it's going again. Yeah. I realized why it all happened. It's like a toy gun and a prank at first, so I guess maybe that, you know, we were moving slow and maybe that's why he fired that warning shot to get us to move faster and that he would not You all set? Uh, well, Deb, uh, I guess, uh, what can you tell us? Oh, we have uh, two men listed in stable condition at Mary Greeley, an 18-year-old male and a 21-year-old male. They were admitted shortly after midnight uh, last night and after initial treatment. Okay, and as far as you say right now, they're in good condition? They're enlisted in stable condition. Stable, good but stable. Okay, um, we know the names, you know. As far as uh, who got shot where, just so we can clarify that, just in case they don't know, you can't, can you say, I know, we know one got shot in the foot, one kind of up towards the hip, a couple of bullet wounds, is it any, any way you can tell us any of that? No, we don't, we don't have that information at this time. Okay. Anything you want to ask? No, I think that's about all we can do. Okay. Thank you. 
mother. Please rise. This court is now in session. Now I Judge Ben Merrill presiding. You may be seated. Uh, Mr. Mack and uh, Mr. Rosenberg, though, I do need two of you to step up here in front of me. Thank you. <coughs>
prior to the time charges were brought against your son, where did we? Uh, in Ames. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the address of the. Was it in the dormitory? In the dormitory, yes. At Iowa State University. Are you acquainted with the defendant, Sam Yes, I am. How long ago? Since he enrolled at Iowa State. Uh, corrections on the copy which the court has, there, is a, there are a total of eight points granted. What are you hoping that the bond is set up? I have no idea. I've never been confronted with anything like this, so I just don't know. Do you have any explanations? Can you explain why this happened? Uh, we're supposed not to say anything. That will all come out in the trial, I assume, now. you know. Thank you very much.